I share my thoughts about the Dell XPS 15. Let's check it out. What is good YouTube, it's that one camera guy back at it again with another video for you. This is a discussion, kind of a sit down talking head video where I share my experience having used the Dell XPS 15 for about two weeks. Now, that really isn't the enough time to fully evaluate a laptop, but I wanted to position myself in a way to use it as a content creator. So uh, for those of you watching this right now, that's how I'm gonna take a look at it. Someone who makes YouTube videos and does some photo editing and using Lightroom and Adobe Premiere Pro. So that's the perspective that I'm coming from using this laptop. And I'm not going to fully compare it in this video, but I am gonna make some general comparisons to my Dell Alienware 13R3, which is my daily driver. So why did I get this laptop? The Dell XPS 15, the 9560 model, 4K Infinity Touch Display is the one that I have. It has a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD from Samsung, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and a GTX 1050, which is sort of the one of the shining gems about that laptop is the, this, the graphics card that's inside of the laptop. And if you are coming from, let's say, comparing MacBooks, well, MacBook Pro Retina is really optimized for certain individuals is the way I would approach it as a content creator. If you typically use Final Cut Pro, then I would kind of push you towards getting a Mac, obviously. And if you're a Windows, well, if you're a Premiere Pro user or the Adobe Creative Suite user, then in most cases, I think it might be better if you're using Premiere to go ahead and get a Windows-based laptop with a discrete graphics card like a GTX 1050. So that was sort of the concept behind getting it and wanting good battery life was really a big deal because I was gonna to go to a conference for about a week and I wanted something where I could uh, work mobily and not be worried about running out of battery life or maybe I won't have access to power. And I would like to be able to edit videos, edit photos, maybe use um, some other software programs like InDesign or Photoshop and get some work done while I was on the go. So that's pretty much the idea behind the why I got the laptop. Now the model I got is a certified refurbished unit and that could probably explain some of the issues I had with it. So I wanna make it clear in this video that I'm not trying to bash the XPS 15 in any way. I'm gonna share the experience I had with my personal unit and I'd love to hear your thoughts and your experiences for those of you that might have it um, because I think there's some diverse opinions about this particular laptop. Some people like it, some people don't, some have had problems, some had perfect units. So that's something to consider about this particular laptop. So. That's where we're gonna start. Now, as far as how I'm gonna look at this laptop, I gotta compare it to my Alienware 13 R3 because that's my current daily driver. It's the laptop that I currently use to make all my videos and my edits, and it's my work and my home computer. So while I'm at work, I use Premiere Pro, like the Adobe Creative Suite. When I'm home, when I'm editing YouTube videos, I use a Creative Suite as well. So I needed a laptop that would work in both places. The only caveat with the 13R3 is that it has really bad battery life, but it doesn't really matter because I have two bricks or AC bricks, both at work and at home, so I can just plug in while I'm here, plug in while I'm at work, no big deal, and I can go ahead and jump between those two systems. No problem whatsoever. Now over here, you'll notice that I have a computer here as well. This is, uh, I'll talk about this in another video, but it is my desktop PC as well. But I've been transitioning away from it and moving more towards my 13R3. So there you go, that is sort of the back end as far as my daily driver. Um, the Alienware 13R3, I'll tell you right now, just choose through everything, works really well, very minimal issues and highly recommend it if you're looking for a desktop replacement. Let's go ahead and talk about the actual XPS 15 and my overall experiences, and I'll try my best to share both pros and cons as equally as possible, but a lot of them is gonna be cons, but we'll, we'll get into that. First of all, the 4K display on the XPS 15 is exactly as everyone has says. It's very beautiful, it's very bright, it's sharp, and it looks really darn good. So if you're a content creator, maybe you're doing Photoshop or Premiere, photo, uh, Premiere or anything like of that sort, I think you're really gonna love that display. Now, I'm not saying the 1080p option that they provide is not good, uh, and I have not used it. I'm just saying from my experience with the 4K display, you're gonna fall in love with it. And especially since it's um, a thin bezel, it, it almost covers the entire screen. It's really challenging to go back to a different screen at times because you get so used to that look. Oh, and, and by the way, I think it's like 100% sRGB and almost like 99 to 100% on the Adobe RGB. So again, very color accurate for content creators and very helpful to have that. The keyboard itself, didn't really have any problems with it. It's fine. Uh, I prefer my Alienware's uh, my I prefer my Alienware's keyboard a little bit more, but the Dell XPS 15 is pretty good too. And uh, with that, it also has a backlit keyboard and it has two settings, so you can adjust that as you need to. And I, it's a it's an added benefit. And I really do appreciate these manufacturers adding that in there. Um, 
it just helps you in certain situations where there's not enough illumination. Battery life on this laptop is pretty good. I got about six hours for general usage. So if you're using a low power setting, you're gonna get about six to seven hours if you're just typing or surfing the web. But as soon as you start opening up programs like Photoshop, you're gonna start noticing it go down to three to four hours. And then in my experience, if I'm editing a video and I'm really getting into it, it's gonna be about an hour and a half to two hours at max. Um, as far as the actual usage. So just because it says it's gonna have a good battery life doesn't mean it's gonna be good battery life when you're actually doing hardcore work on it. But for general use, it's gonna be okay. As far as ports, the most notable ones, you get a Thunderbolt port, you get two full USB 3.0 ports, um, you get HDMI, and you also get the SD card. I might've missed one or two things, but I really like the SD card. I know it's not a really a big deal. You can usually get a little tiny adapter like the one I'm gonna show you right now. And that usually takes care of most of the problems that I have with transferring files from my cameras. But most, of, most if not all my cameras have SD cards. And it really did stink when the 13R3 did not have an SD card slot considering the thick profile that that laptop has. All right, let's go ahead and jump into some of the issues with the actual laptop. And I, I will try to balance it out as best as I can. The first thing is the network card. I think it's, I'm kind of being nitpicking a little bit about it, but it's a problem that's been pre prevalent with other um, Dell laptops. For example, my Dell Alienware 13R3 suffers from the same issues. It's not that it won't connect to the internet or to the network. It's just that if you get to a certain distance, the network card kind of struggles. So for my home router, my phone, my iPad, my MacBook, and other devices really have no issues whatsoever connecting to the home router. But when I'm at a certain distance, let's say at the, in the living room and the router is in this room, it has problems. It's not a deal breaker, it's not a big issue, so to speak. Um, so one remedy is to actually get an Intel uh, wireless network card. And so uh, it sucks that you have to buy yourself, but some people have been lucky enough to complain to Dell and were able to get a replacement unit. So, But that is something that's been known on most of these Dell laptops. It's not something uncommon. So it is a little bit frustrating, but all I did was just buy an Intel-based card and it's fixed and resolved most of my problems on my Alienware 13 r 3 I didn't do that for the actual XPS 15. Lightroom editing on this laptop is a kind of a hit or miss. Like I said, my this is my personal experience. For one, it looks beautiful. It's very great to see like the resolution, the detail in your photos right away on a 4K display. Um, but the issues I was having with the Lightroom software is that it just struggled with loading files. And by the way, the way I process it is just, I use Photo Mechanic first to choose my photos because I could go to an event and I might shoot maybe 800 photos or something, right? I'll use Photo Mechanic to quickly tag photos because it's much faster to load. I'll pick them out and maybe I'll narrow it down to 80 photographs. And so I'll bring them into Lightroom and then those 80 photos, I will do a one-to-one -one preview on them. And in that case, you would think it would speed up the process. And even with that, it still took some time to go from one photo to another. It wasn't like terrible, but when you're on a time crunch and you're trying to make YouTube videos, content creation, and your full-time work, you do full-time work and you got other stuff going on, you kind of want things just to work really, really fast. And so uh, compared to my Alienware 13R3, it wasn't something I experienced. Granted, it's a 4K display, so I do um, take that into account, but it was kind of slow. It, it wasn't very fast. And in on top of that, if you have the graphics card enabled, the GTX 1050, I got weird blocking issues on the actual software. So if I wanted to zoom in on a particular image, you would see all these blocks appear. Wasn't gonna work for me. So I had to disable the graphics card. And so I lose the benefit of the graphics card to run Lightroom or to improve its performance, which really sucks. Could it be fixed later on? Absolutely, but currently the way I was using it, it just was not working properly. Video editing on the XPS 15 wasn't bad at all. It's very good because again, the screen real estate and being able to see all the elements you're working with, especially if you are using Premiere Pro, it's a big problem uh, not being able to see all your elements and, and such. And so I think that's the benefit you get out of maybe for say a 1080p display. Not saying that you can't edit on a 1080p display, but having a 4K display is great. But what I'm noticing is that it's having trouble driving the content. One little issue that I noticed right away was that I couldn't I couldn't play back files at one to one preview. So that kind of stunk a little bit. It wasn't a deal breaker, but I'd have to knock it down like one fourth and even in some cases one eighth for it to just be able to function properly, which was really strange. And then on my Alienware 13R3, didn't have those issues. I can pretty much just run it on full and maybe one half at times on 4K content. So it kind of, mm, kind of a little sting there, a little bit slow here and there. It's still doable. I, I, I edited about six or seven videos using the XPS 15 and I was still able to get through it. One notable issue though, and I think others have reported it, is that you get stuttering issues on the XPS 15, the particular model that I got. 15 is 
doing that weird stuttering thing where yeah. it literally becomes unusable. Right now, uh, while I'm editing this video, and yeah, it's it's rather painful. I'm gonna go ahead and save it. I'll be editing a video, and then all of a sudden, it will just the mouse will just start to stutter, like it won't move. And you, trying to interact with anything is just null. Like you can't do anything for about 20 seconds to maybe even a minute. And this might happen once or twice while I'm editing a video. And not a deal breaker in that sense, but it's frustrating considering that you paid so much for a laptop and you're getting these little issues. So again, primarily my side of the story, uh, maybe yours is different and I'd love to hear what you have to say about that. Exporting the video in Premiere was definitely a bit slower than normal. It wasn't like terribly slow. So for example, let's say I finish a project, maybe it's like 10 minutes long and I'm ready to export it. It, um, you know, it'll take me like 25 minutes or something like that, and or 35 minutes, where with the Dell Alienware 13 R3, I might save maybe five to 10 minutes on my export. No big deal, you know, I could just walk away, do something else. But typically when I'm strapped for time and I wanna get stuff done quick, I wanna be able to export and do other things. With the XPS 15, I'm not saying it's impossible, but what happened with mine is that I would start exporting and I couldn't like use Photoshop at a fast speed. Like I couldn't use it one to one. It's like 30% of the original speed. Or for example, like I gotta go load up my website, start typing some stuff, get my links ready for my YouTube video and do a couple other things on Google, the Google Chrome browser and it just crawled to a slow. Like for whatever reason, and it might go back to the network card issue, but I'd load up Chrome and it just wouldn't load any content from the internet. Like the, it's like the internet just stopped working. Um, it still would load, but it was a bit slow. And it was kind of frustrating to deal with. I'm not saying it's impossible to work with. It's just that I don't think the XPS 15, the particular model that I got, would be well suited for multitasking. So if you hit the export button, recommendation is just to let it do its thing and export alone. However, with the Alienware 13R3, I could export, I could load up Photoshop and get like 90% performance. I could load up Chrome and just type away everything that I needed to do without having to just walk away from my laptop. So again, I'm doing those comparisons because time is important to me. You might value things differently or your workflow might be different, but um, for my particular workflow, it just wasn't the most ideal. So let's talk about OBS. OBS, again, very popular software. People are using it a lot nowadays. I'm using it to record my video footage directly into my laptop just to kind of bypass the using an SD card and all that junk, right? So I'm using that and I'm using my Dell Alienware 13R3. I got a 4K signal going into my laptop and it's saving it as a 4K video file. No problems, no problems whatsoever. And I've, I've used, I've mixed other signals into my laptop without any major issues. With the XPS 15, when I was trying to do this with the OBS software, it would not work or it would work, but the resulting video footage was stuttering. And again, I don't know, it was basically was having trouble pulling a 4K signal into the laptop. I don't know personally if it's an issue with drivers and such, which I did try to remedy by getting the proper drivers, uninstalling and what have you, but I just couldn't get it to work properly. So um, OBS did not work to my satisfaction and so that was a big deal breaker for me on the XPS 15. So if you use OBS, might be something to think about. Finally, as far as other issues was the random restarts. Now it was very predominant when I first got the laptop and I was trying it out and this was during the phase when it's doing its updates and such, but I did the BIOS updates, I did all that stuff already and got up the up, I basically got everything up to date and I would still get maybe once a day a random restart or a blue screen and it had to do with the Intel graphics driver and no matter what I did or whatever I tried to do and follow the steps people recommended, I couldn't get it to work. Now. People did recommend just do a full install again of Windows and I did not want to spend additional time doing that. I tried to remedy as best as I could based on the system that I already had in front of me. So I could have got better results, but I didn't want to spend more time than I, I needed to. So quickly, as far as conclusion goes, I think this is a really interesting laptop if your unit does work properly. I think it, uh, depending on your workflow and what you do and what you need it for, if you do travel a lot and you need that battery life, I think the XPS 15 is great. Um, I just pointed out basically honest, uh, I, I just pointed out in this video some of the pitfalls it has and how it affects my workflow and why it won't work for me. So as far as the laptop's concerned, I am gonna be sending it back, not just because it didn't work out for me, but it definitely did have issues that uh, were not normal with this particular laptop unit. But if you do get a working model, you're gonna absolutely love the 4K display. Um, the ports options that are available are really good. And you're just gonna enjoy your overall experience using it. And so I just hope Dell can improve some of its quality control issues in a future model. I will definitely be looking at the next generation XPS 15 because um, this one is very interesting and I almost wanted to keep it, but 
again, the actual issues were a problem. I was going to replace my Alienware 13R3 with this XPS 15 laptop, but spending those two weeks with it really showed me how frustrating it was working with it. And yeah, I'm going to wait for another model. But other than that, folks, that's my thoughts on it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, subscribe, and check out my other content. And with that said, I'm your host, Alan Camera Guy, and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.